In this video, I'll show you how to get through the whole hard coaster. I won't be going through how you control the character in the mini games because that is all you can already just see that in the mini game help. But I will explain some strategies, some techniques that I use to just make it easier, and also where you have to take an intentional death to save time. After every mini game completed, you gain a bonus multiplier. So after you completed two mini games, you will get. 10 coins times 2, 10 coins times 3, and it will just keep stacking up like that the more mini games you win in a row. So at one point in a run, you want to take an intentional death to reset that coin bonus. At the start of every world you enter, you want to hit no when they ask you to save, since it only loses time. So the first mini game coming up on mini game coaster is bumper balls. Like 80% of your resets are gonna be here. 80 to 90 percent. It's just like a really it's just a difficult minigame to get a good time on best bet is usually just using the hills like just going slightly up the hill and then back down and also just hoping that the cpu is dumb anything from 35 to 45 is a good time so in roll call you are counting toads in hard mode it can range from 18 to 26 the lower the number the better the more time you save there are some fake toads in there like just the big the more chunky mushrooms so just watch out for those don't count those just as simple as that power driver uh your only goal here you just want to ground pound just try and get the lowest ground pounds possible i'm gonna save you some time here you can just lose also like 13 seconds to pure rng so just pray that you get a good board slot card derby on hard coaster it's the cock and ball track i think it's the easiest one you'd never have to let go on the outer lane you can just hold straight all the way on the three inner lanes you only have to let go once on each ball so yeah I'll just mark it for you right here where you need to let go and that's just a general area of where you need to slow down you only have to let it go back to neutral for just that tiny bit then you can just go straight full speed again try to flick it as fast as possible it's just really straightforward just aim for like 35s at start 35 36 and then 34 50s is not too hard to get also this might be inaccurate but getting a full start speeds you up and might i think it saves time i get my best time to do a full start instead of getting a proper start because you just speed up like crazy i don't know why but just be like that cake factory you can either be the one who has to put the cake or the strawberry on the table i find personally the cake easier to do because you don't have to hold your input it's also just a bigger hitbox the only thing you have to worry about is not double kicking it the cpus can be slow sometimes if you get the strawberry it's just a smaller hitbox but you'll figure it out you just need to hold a to not place the strawberry immediately on the table and just wait for the cpu to place the cake first and you are good to go On Destruction Duet, you just want to try and get the lowest jump kicks as possible. It's a bit CPU dependent on how fast you can do it, if they do a lot of punches or kicks. But uh, aiming for a 43 is a good time. If you do it really well, you can get a 44, and that's all you need to know. A Balloon Burst, you can either go for just full pumps, which will usually get you just around 20, and if you do half pumps, you can get 21s. I recommend just doing the full pumps in the start and just get the 20s. The 21 isn't that big of a deal. That one second doesn't actually matter that much. On Looney Lumberjacks, just make sure that you do like the full motion. The faster you go, the more time you're gonna lose. You wanna do the whole range because that just cuts more. You will get usually 50s, 49s, that's fine. I tried messing around with it. The, the faster I did it, the, <laughs> the slower it got. Speed hockey. This game is just pure cringe. You can... <laughs> just good luck man it's it's so awful you can lose every run here you're just gonna automatically lose like 10 to 30 seconds i find every speed hockey that gets a split time under a minute is usually decent if you're really lucky you can get 40 or a 48 i say that's really lucky but usually just around the 50 range is good come on come on come on bounce in bounce in yes let's fucking go let's fucking go Train game is another one that requires a bit of luck. Uh, the layout, you can either get a good layout that requires no extra time, or you need to get an extra timer, which will lose you around 13 seconds, usually. So it's not that big of a deal, but it sucks when you have to consider speed hockey and look away, which are two big run killers. Look away is a difficult one in the start. I just, you just gotta hope that you can actually do it. Uh, I'd recommend uh, doing a couple of pulse buffers to see where they're moving. It's a bit difficult. If you're lucky, you might get a one cycle like I did in this one run. 
and otherwise two to three cycles is what you're gonna get so our travels it's a tricky one you just gotta hope that the purple boards will actually hold the cpu down usually when you're about to shoot one of them either moves so if you're struggling to hit the targets i'd recommend just waiting half a second and also just wait until they're by a wall or just getting held back by another cpu aka purple board on baller usually every spawn you can get a one cycle i think the worst possibility you have is if every pin spawns in the back row but if you don't get a one cycle you lose about 10 seconds it's not the biggest of deals you can also just get really unlucky and have the cpu jump over your shell so otherwise it's really straightforward Toad in the box the first three boxes pretty simple no need to pause buffer there on the fourth one you might want to pause buffer i have a audio cue that i go for that i make myself i just like make a sound every time i see the the red toad and just kind of time it that way on the fifth one you can either mash and hope you get the toad or you can pause buffer aiming for if you go for the chomp the chain chomp visual cue you just have to delay it a little bit if you get bowser just mash like crazy but it's uh it's really just a feel thing you'll uh, you'll figure it out the more you play on tipsy tourney i uh just start in the bottom right corner you move up then to the left then down and then you want to do like some small turns to make sure the shelf stays on the inner side and it's also it just requires practice i'm still a bit inconsistent on it but it's something you can definitely just get down totem pole just simple you just jump up ground pound just make sure you get a really good height and be careful about the end lag of every ground pound sometimes your a input just might not go through you just want to wait until your character basically stands straight up this is dancing it's just rng which way the controllers work because they're all reversed or just they're all mixed up so just figure out which way is straight and then that's basically what you gotta do just walk straight to the note on shell shock my strat is to just kill the guy to the left of me just go for him two bullets fast then move on to the next guy hopefully one of the cpus shoot each other makes it easier less bullets and you want to aim for two i think a 53 or 52 is good on shell shock magnet cards you want to try and get the least amount of coins possible you need 15 to win so obviously try to get 15 but usually you will average around 18 unless you're really lucky with getting all the three coin back spawns close to you then you can go for a 15 and every extra amount of coins just try and put them into your enemy pool because any additional coins above 15 is just going to lose you extra time with the multiplier bobsled run it's very simple just mash a at the start go for all the three boosts you don't have to go for the middle boost at the start because it's it's more difficult than the other boosts to get but if you do try to go for it an easy setup for the middle boost is just to go close to the ledge before the road splits and then you just turn hard left and the cpu will usually help you with that Hanker Havoc, just mash, all left and right depending on which direction you go, that's about it. Sky Pilots, also just simple, get through all the rainbow rings. There's like three sections, the first rings, the second rings, then the third rings. When you're on the second rings, try to get as close to the castle as you can with your boost. And on the last one, just try and get as far left as you possibly can while still hitting the last two rings. Torpedo targets, you can get severely destroyed by RNG here, depending on where the targets spawn, how your CPU moves. Sometimes your CPU will just move into the wall, the camera will give you these weird ass angles. But you do have control of your missile, so if you just manage to control your missile good, just remember that up and down is inverted, while left and right is still the same. Usually if you get 4 or 5 targets, you are pretty much safe, you can do whatever you want in that time. I would suggest if you play on N64 to try and just get the minimum amount of targets you need because it does cause a bit of lag when you destroy a target. Toad's Bandstand, probably the easiest game in the minigame coaster, but you can still lose there to just pure RNG because that's how the CPUs work. Even if you don't make any mistakes, the CPU can make mistakes. So just hope that you're lucky. 
quicksand cache. This is the part of the run where you take an intentional death if you haven't died at any point before this. Since your bonus streak is so high, you want to reset it here because you're just going to lose too much time from every minigame at this point. Assuming you do not die or lose at any point in the rest of the run. But there's also a risk because quicksand cache is quite difficult to get done fast or also just win at times you can get really unlucky with the coin bags so taking a death at lights out is a safer option it will lose you some time but it might be worth it to just keep the run going on lights out i just run in circles pretty much i just keep track of when i hear the hammer sound make sure that he's not too close maybe i'll just run into the wall for a couple of seconds and then just keep it going in a circle and you should be fine Drop drop a roll, you can just cheese the minigame by constantly jumping. Your momentum doesn't carry with you, so it's just really easy for the three players. On shock drop or roll, just have a good memory. You can write it down, you can say it out loud. I personally just say it out loud. It makes it easier for me to remember. It's not much more than that. Fillet relay or fillet relay, however you want to say it, I don't know. What I do here is just I keep mashing until I see that Mario's sliding then i slow down at the start you just want to make sure that if the cpu falls early you can just go ahead if it doesn't i usually just let him pass me and then i go to the right that's just to decrease the risk of him bumping into me and i just fall really far behind and also just staying on the right side you get to avoid the first couple snowballs and then it just you just avoid all the snowballs it, it makes the course a lot more easy Bob on barrage this game is actually quite scary sometimes the cpus will just have really good throws i just go back and forth in big motions and try to turn the moment i see a cpu is about to throw there's not much more to it than that just gotta be careful honeycomb have a big run killer you can be really unlucky i have a spreadsheet for this that takes the assumption that they're always out to get you so even in the loose situations you might still win by the cpus being dumb but yeah if you just follow the spreadsheet i put up now or i'll put it in the description you can just follow that spreadsheet mecha marathon this one i struggled with in the start i didn't realize how difficult it was going to be to mash two buttons at the same time compared to just one you just need to find your best mashing technique i put my controller on the table and just mash cpus average from like a little bit above 20 yards to 32 ish so if you can mash above 32 every time you're good and if you are struggling look up a video with different mashing techniques maybe there is a technique you find easier than what i do or yeah it's all up to you pretty much abandon ship everything you've done up until now pretty much does not matter <laughs> if abandon ship doesn't give you good rng i've run this game a shit ton of times just on emulator with turbo mode with i've just tried out everything driven timings and i think it has to be really random the best energy you can get is when the three branches is at the end because the cpu will usually go for the coins you will end up having no one challenging you at the top but you can still just lose because sometimes they will go for the coins and still just catch up i think it might be because of the auto scroll mechanic so you all get to the top at a tight pace so yeah good luck with this one in hot drop jump you just gotta hit 50 even if the cpus go out early you still have to hit 50. only thing to be cautious about is not doing full hops all the time since there is a bit of lag to your landing when the rope speeds up you want to do a lot of short hops to be able to make it in time for the next jump in skateboard camper you just gotta jump over the booing platforms when you get on the down slopes you want to jump on the uphill part Otherwise, it's just straightforward. Jump over the platforms, jump up the staircase, just jump twice. Then you get down to two hills and then you have to jump over another platforms. When you see the four platforms in a row, you only need to jump once unless you got stuck at some point. You also don't need to jump on the second last one. And I don't think you need to jump on the last one too, but I still do it. On platform peril, just, just watch out that your upright notch actually takes you straight. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't drift left or right too much because then they will just catch up. When you get on the green escalator, just do a short hop and ride most of it. And when you get to the red escalator or the red big escalator, just do two short hops to gain some distance between yourself and the CPUs. Deep Sea Savage, just collect 15 coins. That's what you need to win the minigame. Doesn't matter what the CPUs have. 
Don't get more than 15 coins because it will lose you time with the multiplier. Shaga says you can either do a no fake out, one fake out, or two fake outs. The way you tell is just by watching how fast Lakiru is moving. So if he's moving really fast, it's going to be no fake out. If he's moving a bit slow, it's going to be one fake out. And if he's moving really slow, it's going to be a double fake out. A sneak a snore just to release the joystick when the bubble is about to burst. If it's not bursting, then just keep going. Once you hit the last three tiles on the way back, you don't need to stop if the bubble pops. You can just keep walking. On hexagon, you want to try to block the CPUs by reaching the platform first and then jump block them. If you are unlucky and you get a gray hexagon as the first one, I found a strat. So you can't directly push people in this minigame, but for some reason you can run at another CPU, push them by using the side of your character. So that's how you push, for example, Luigi off in this clip, and you can do the same with each, and you just want to try and edge card them. Lava Tile Isle, one of the more difficult games. You want to hope for a good spawn, which would be top left or top right. That sets you up for an easy kill at the start by just running at the CPU right next to you, doing two punches. You can also be really aggro and just try and punch everyone down. When there's one left and the middle space is open, the CPU will always move towards the top right corner. Unless, as Luigi did in this clip, they will just run off the edge sometimes, which if that happens, that's just really lucky. But in most scenarios, that doesn't happen. So just move yourself off the right corner here and just aim your punch towards middle and they will just walk into you. Bombs away. Scary on pace. Just jump when you see the bullet bills. Be aware of the shadows of the cannonballs. And when you get to the end, if there's a CPU left and there's the final shot, just keep jumping or just stay away from the CPU. Because if they, if they manage to squish you right before the final shot, you're probably dead. And you just want to be off the island when the last bolt bill hits. And now moving into the final mini game. This is where you'll be set up against three Bowser Juniors. Whatever you click in this menu doesn't matter. This one is really nerve wracking. It's quite difficult to get on first try. My strat, I start by holding C, move towards the right side. Shoot the first Bowser. Keep on moving to the left guy. I just start killing him instantly. And then I watch out, try to be behind the pipe here. Kill the middle guy and then just finish off the right guy. I'd recommend booting up the game on emulator and just getting a save state for this game to practice it. But that's the strat that has worked out for me the most. And there you go. That's hard coaster completed. If this guide helped you out or if you have any questions, just feel free to drop by on my Twitch when I'm streaming and ask questions right away. Or just leave whatever questions you have about the speedrun in the comments.